Preface Social distancing is a term used for such measures that health authorities take to discourage or delay the spread of a highly infectious disease. The health official has the legislative power to introduce steps to isolate society, as these initiatives would have a direct effect on our society. Any effort to implement social distancing initiatives must be orchestrated with local authorities, such as communities, police forces, and education centers, as well as with state and federal stakeholders. The statutory health bodies are responsible for collecting information on social distancing to physically separate the public from society. This knowledge is provided to help people understand what might be expected to do if social distancing strategies are put into action by the health advisor. What are the steps to separate people from society? Social distancing measures are taken to limit when and where the spread of communicable diseases can be prevented or decelerated. Summary With the coronavirus transmitting across the globe, health experts recommend that people who are very much at risk of becoming infected must stay as often as possible at home to keep a distance from huge gatherings. Aging people and persons with cardinal health problems are advised to create distance between themselves and others while restricting to the homely environment with adequate privacy. It's a commonplace stuff, as claimed by Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIH, on NBC's Meet the Press. He also asserted that people should not go to a mass event, especially if they are susceptible to viruses. Viruses like the novel coronavirus, as well as the common cold and seasonal influenza, are quickly transmitted by close contact with other individuals. The virus can be spread by droplets in the air as individuals sneeze or cough. It might also be spread on surfaces when something like a door handle or elevator button is reached by someone who is sick and coughs or sneezes into their hands and then touches his own nose, eyes, or mouth and passes the virus. If a virus epidemic is serious, officials in charge of public health must always do more than make recommendations to keep people safe. The appropriate authorities must take action to reduce the progression of the disease by stopping large numbers of people from congregating. This state of affairs is regarded as social distancing. One of the aims of social distancing is to keep people out of environments such as classrooms, offices, and shopping malls, where they are in close proximity for an extended time. Another objective is to stop public congregations such as movies, concerts, religious ceremonies, and sports events. As per the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, when people are out in the open, the best idea is to keep a distance from one another about six feet asunder. County health officials may ask companies to have workers working from home and may encourage educational institutions to close down, allowing students to attend classes online. They might close the in-house transportation and terminate events such as ceremonies and school functions. Social distancing measures are linked with cities, police administration, education centers, state and federal agencies. The idea is to slow down the outbreak of epidemics, and the most insecure people in the community are covered by limiting interactions among people. Changes such as social distancing can make the distinction from preventing a virus to spread faster. Isolation and Quarantine Social distancing is a set of initiatives that are used to safeguard the entire population of a nation. However, people also need to take extra care to secure others from getting infected with the help of quarantine or isolation. Isolation Isolated individuals are those who are suspected or believed to have been infected by the virus. The process of isolation helps them recover without further spreading the virus to other people. People are altogether isolated because the disease is communicable. So while the sick people are isolated, Health officials continue to monitor all the source contacts they have in their history. It helps to access the root of the illness, and also identifies if someone else should be isolated or quarantined. Quarantine 
The quarantine restricts the movement of individuals or separates them who are subjected to virus infection but are still out of danger. The quarantine effect lasts for a reasonable time to make sure that exposed people will not be taken ill. Sometimes it has been seen that people who have contact with an infected person are asked to go back to self-quarantine at home. Though, if there is an alleged exposure to someone with the virus, the regulatory authorities may also mandate large numbers of related people to be quarantined, like entire students of a classroom or passengers of a specific train compartment. One might have noticed that sometimes a person talks to another person putting a step back. The second person may take a step forward, but the first person again steps back. Many people will term it as a weird approach on part of the first person, but there is nothing strange about the entire way of conversation. It just implies that the second person is too close to him, and he has invaded the first person's personal space. Likewise, people can just imagine that everyone has an invisible circle of communication. It is discomforting when someone else enters this domain, as both the persons in question strive to regain their territory. For several decades, scientists have been trying to explain the space and distance approach. Why do people feel discomfort in a congested elevator or overflowing bus? Why do they get edgy and feel awkward in the queue? Edward T. Hall, an anthropologist who in 1966 introduced the term proxemics, or the study of static measurable distances among people as they communicate. So what is the distance should one choose? How close is it to the other person in question? How could one avoid intrusion of a human personal space? There are four public dialogue corridors, personal, intimate, social, and public. The personal, intimate, and social zones are the ones that people need to be aware of when talking to visitors in one's place of comfort. The intimate distance commences with contact with the skin, and is approximately 46 centimeters, 18 inches, wide. An intimate distance is regarded as the space utilized by the emotionally closer people, friends, family, and children. Personal distance varies from 46 centimeters to 120 centimeters, 18 inches to 4 feet, or at arm's length. It is not decent to enter this zone while talking to an individual. One should try to read and realize the person he is communicating with. If the other person takes a step back, it's a message that the interaction is too proximate. If the other person moves his head forward or leans toward the first person, it may be an indication for reducing the distance. The preventive measures, viz. social distancing, quarantine, and self-isolation, are based on these space elements that play an important role in slow down Chapter the one, spread of a pandemic. Social distancing, an overview. Social distancing, or physical isolation, is a set of non-medical anti-infection control measures aimed at stopping or slowing down the spread of communicable diseases. The purpose of social distancing is to minimize the chance of contact among persons who are infected due to a virus outbreak and others who are not to play down disease transmission and the rate of mortality. Social distancing is most beneficial when the infection can be transmitted by direct communication through an invisible droplet, sneezing or coughing, direct and indirect physical contact e.g. by having to touch a contaminated object like a door handle, or airborne transmission, if the microorganism can sustain in the air for a considerable length of time. Social distancing may be less successful in cases where the microorganism can survive in the air for a longer period. The disadvantages of social distances may include solitude, lower productivity, and the loss of other advantages related to human interaction. Historically, leprosy colonies had been maintained as a means of preventing the spread of leprosy and other serious diseases through social distancing until comprehended and subsequently was ways of effective treatments were developed. From the viewpoint of epidemiology, the basic objective behind social distancing is to reduce the elementary reproduction number which is the average number of secondarily infected persons derived from one primary infected individual inhabitant, where all individuals are uniformly susceptible 
to disease. In the fundamental model of social distancing, where a percentage of the population participates in social distancing in order to reduce their relational contact to a fraction of their normal contact. For instance, a reduction of 25% of the social contacts of the masses to 50% of their normal level provides an effective reproduction figure of about 80% of the fundamental reproduction number. A seemingly small reduction has a profound effect on delaying the rapid growth and spread of the disease. A spreading disease can lead to a change of behavior amidst people deciding to stay away from public places and their companions. When enforced to control epidemics, social distancing can result in benefits, but it could be expensive. Research shows that the measures need to be applied intensively and immediately to be productive. In Philadelphia and St. Louis, during the flu pandemic of 1918, U.S. authorities introduced bans on public meetings, school closures, and other social distancing initiatives. But in Philadelphia, the five-day lagging in implementing these steps caused transmission rates to increase three to five times, while in St. Louis, a more prompt response was effective in reducing the intensity of the disease. During the 1918 epidemic, Bootsma and Ferguson surveyed social distancing initiatives in nearly 16 U.S. cities and noticed that time-bound initiatives only marginally decreased overall mortality rate, maybe 10 to 25 percent, and that the effect was mostly very negligible because the interventions were implemented too late and lifted too early. It was found that some cities experienced an outbreak after social distancing restrictions were lifted, causing exposure of susceptible individuals who had been covered since then were exposed. Preventive Measures School Closures Mathematical research has revealed that closing schools will prolong the spread of an epidemic. Effectiveness also depends on the interactions that children hold beyond the school enclosure. Parents sometimes need to take time off from work so that extended closures can be appropriate. Such factors may contribute to social and economic disruption. School closures have been shown to reduce morbidity from Asian flu by 95% during the pandemic of 1957-58 and by 45% in influenza control in the United States in 2004-2008. Likewise, mandatory school closures and other social distancing steps had resulted in a 30 to 35 percent decline in influenza. Amid a swine flu epidemic in the United Kingdom in 2009, a team of epidemiologists in an article entitled Closure of Schools During an Influenza Pandemic, published in The Lancet Infectious Diseases, advocated the closure of schools to disrupt the path of the virus delay further spread, and buy time to study and develop a suitable vaccine. After studying previous influenza epidemics, including the flu pandemic of 1918, the influenza epidemic of 1957, and the flu pandemic of 1968, the researchers stated that school closure would have an economic and human resource impact, especially with a large proportion of doctors and nurses being women, half of whom had children under the age of 15. They also studied the nature of influenza spreading in France during French school holidays and observed that flu cases decreased when schools closed and resurfaced when they opened. They observed that when Israel's teachers went on strike during the 1999-2000 flu outbreaks, both doctor visits and the number of respiratory infections as well fell by more than a fifth and more than two-fifths, respectively. Preventive steps, such as social distancing and self-isolation, have caused the widespread closing of primary, secondary, and higher education schools in more than 125 countries during the coronavirus pandemic of 2019-2020. As of 24 March 2020, more than 1.5 billion learners are out of school due to school closures in the wake of COVID-19. Because of low rates of COVID-19 infection among children, the usefulness of school closures has attracted criticism. Even though school closures are temporary, they bear high social and economic costs. 
Although the total impact of school closures during the coronavirus pandemic is not yet established, early evidence indicates school closures have adversely affected local economies and student learning curve. Greetings In 2014, scientists in at Wales had shown that a handshake between two individuals transmitted more bacteria than other types of hand greeting. Despite the criticism, the study received considerable media attention. Social distancing strategies, including multiple movements that avoid physical contact, minimize the risk of infection during flu pandemics. The gesture of namaskar, holding one's palms together, pointing one's fingers upward, bringing one's hands to the heart, is one of the most effective alternatives to minimize the spread of virus infection. During the coronavirus pandemic outbreak in the United Kingdom in 2020, this gesture of namaskar has been applied by Prince Charles to welcome visitors and duly endorsed by the World Health Organization, WHO, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Some equivalents include the waving, the shaka, or hang loose sign, and placing a palm on your face, as seen in parts of Iran. Quarantine Probability Estimated 7,500 people were forced to compulsory home quarantine during the 2003 SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, outbreak in Singapore, and a further 4,500 individuals were expected to be self-monitored for symptoms and to make regular personal contact with health authorities over the telephone as a means of controlling the epidemic. Whereas only 55 of these individuals were later diagnosed with SARS, officials in public health were comfortable that this measure helped prevent yet more spreading of the infection. In 2009, Voluntary self-isolation might have helped lower influenza transmission in Texas. Both short- and long-term negative psychological implications had been recorded. Workplace Shutdown Mapping and prediction studies based on U.S. data indicate that if 15% of infected offices are closed, the average transmission rate of infection is about 12% and the peak time of the outbreak is slightly deferred. For the sake of comparison, if 35% of affected workplaces are shut, the attack rate will decline to 5%, and the high period will be postponed at least for a week. Protective Seclusion The city of Gunnison, Colorado, isolated itself for two months during the 1918 influenza outbreak to prevent the virus from being spread across. All roads had been barricaded close to the country's outskirts. Train conductors warned all passengers that they would be detained and quarantined for at least five days if they stepped outside the train at Gunnison. During the outbreak, no causality had been reported on account of the influenza epidemic in Gunnison as a result of the isolation. Similar initiatives were implemented by many other states. Confinement in 1995, a cordon sanitaire, confinement, withdrawal, was used to contain an Ebola virus outbreak in Zaire. The town was surrounded by the troops, and all domestic and international flights were suspended. The medical teams of the World Health Organization and the country itself erected more sanitary cordons, alienating burial and treatment zones from the general public that that effectively curbed the spread of the disease. During the 2003 SARS outbreak in Canada, community quarantine was used, with mixed success, to limit disease transmission. Travel Restrictions Internal travel restrictions, or border demarcation, are unlikely to prolong an epidemic by more than two to three weeks when enforced with a coverage of more than 95%. Airport screening was found to be ineffective from preventing viral transmission during the 2003 SARS outbreak in the United States and Canada. Rigorous border controls between Austria and the Ottoman Empire, enforced between 1770 and 1871 to prevent people infected with the bubonic plague from reaching Austria, were apparently successful, as there were no major plague outbreaks in Austria after that 
while the Ottoman Empire continued to experience regular plague epidemics until the mid-19th century. A study in the journal in March 2020 by Northeastern University found that travel restrictions to and from China only slow down COVID-19's international spread associated with efforts to minimize group and individual transmission. Travel restrictions are not enough unless people combine them with social distancing. The study concluded that Wuhan's travel ban only postponed the spread of the disease to other parts of mainland China by maybe three to five days, while it shortened the spread of foreign cases by as much as 75%. A basic reason why travel restrictions are less successful is that many coronavirus-infected patients do not show symptoms during the initial stages of the disease. Assembly Restrictions There is conflicting evidence indicating that large events increase the threat of transmission of infectious diseases. Empirical evidence indicates that certain forms of mass assemblies may be associated with increased risk of transmission of influenza, and may also germinate new strains into an environment, converting community transmission in a pandemic. Military actions in Philadelphia and Boston during the influenza pandemic of 1918 could have been responsible for spreading the disease by mixing infected sailors with the civilians. Restricting large meetings can help minimize transmission in conjunction with other social distancing strategies. Coronavirus Measures All through the coronavirus pandemic of 2019-2020, Some government authorities stressed social distancing and related interventions as suitable alternatives to an effective quarantine in the heavily affected region. According to UNESCO monitoring, in response to COVID-19, more than 100 countries initiated school closures, affecting more than half of the world's student population. In the United Kingdom itself, the authorities urged the public to avoid public spaces and closed cinemas and theaters to endorse the government's message loud and clear. Some teenagers and young people voluntarily declined to follow social distancing strategies on their own initiative. In Belgium, media estimated at least 300 individuals attending a rave before local officials dispersed it up. Youths undertaking non-essential trips in France are charged up to $100. During the spring break, beaches in Alabama and Florida were closed to disperse partygoers. Weddings were put on hold in New Jersey, and a curfew was imposed in Newark. Connecticut, New York, and Pennsylvania were the first states to implement organized policies of social distancing that would close down non-essential businesses and ban large assemblies. On 19 March, shelter orders in effect in California were extended to the entire state. On the same day, Texas declared a state emergency and enforced restrictions Chapter throughout two. the state. Social Distancing – Its Importance With the latest novel coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, prevailing over the universe, people have undoubtedly heard health authorities, celebrities, and even the friends and family members stress the need for social distancing. But there might be some confusion about this fairly new term, what it means, and why it is relevant for the public to follow it in the right earnest. The Centers for Disease Control, CDC, describes social distancing as staying out of crowd settings, avoiding mass gatherings, and maintaining distance about six feet or two meters from others, as and when possible. It's the reason many schools, colleges, and universities are doing away with the spring semester online. Broadway shows are on standstill, and theaters have just been closed down for an indefinite period. It is an attempt to try to reduce the number of germs going from person to person. People unknowingly spread microbes, bacteria, or viruses while they communicate with others, as claimed by David Larson, an epidemiologist and assistant professor of public health at Syracuse University. He contends that each interaction carries a risk of transmitting the germs, 
And in the case of an outbreak of infectious disease, if one is able to minimize such interactions, he is likely in a position to subsequently reduce the possibility of transmission scenario. Basically, if individuals practice social distancing, they can protect themselves, and if the entire population exercises it, the virus germs potentially stop spreading. Besides, there's a graph circulated online that contains two bell curves, one that goes up and down steeply past a horizontal line showing the potential of human health care system, highlighting the current path people are on, and one whose rise and fall is more steady and doesn't exceed the horizontal line, showing what could happen with more protective mechanisms in place. Since the available health care system can handle only a few serious cases at once, if COVID-19 spreads too fast, it will pronounce great trouble. Experts estimate that 15% of the population with the disease may need immediate hospitalization. With such a frequency of hospitalizations, one can overpower the system and get into circumstances where there is inadequate treatment available to all the people who need it, as predicted by Larson. He views that people want to avoid being in a situation where physicians are trying to determine who gets a ventilator, where there is a scarcity for the people who need it immediately, and the similar situation is prevailing in Italy. Healthcare workers, physicians, nurses, technicians, etc., might also get infected, reducing the quality of treatment and causing a rise in crisis. When people are waiting for the graph's curve to grow before they take precautions, it may be too late to matter, but the right precautions may flatten the curve. But even if they feel safe or are not in the higher risk zone, it is crucial to practice social distancing. One problem with COVID-19 is that some people have only mild symptoms, or none at all, especially the younger ones. New research suggests people could transmit the virus until they become representative. It may be called a lag duration between the moment one is infected and the symptoms one shows up. That means relatively safe people will infect others without even knowing that they are carrying the virus. However, testing is not common right now, and people don't know exactly who's got infected, making it harder to handle. A healthy person is thought to be able to spread the virus to more than two individuals, resulting in impacting more individuals and it goes on in geometric progression, as revealed by Peter Gulick, D.O., and medical professor at the S MSU College of Osteopathic Medicine. The moderate or asymptomatic people are at high risk zone, since they're not vulnerable enough to know how to stay away from crowds, and conversely, those who feel ill usually visit a doctor or ER, emergency room. If the competent authorities have enough awareness they can slow down the spread by dispersing the crowd. Social distancing, however, doesn't mean individuals can't leave the house or enjoy with friends, but there must be a logic behind every action. People need to be active. We need to get out there and be sympathetic. People require food to survive, and they must be allowed to access social interaction. However, Voluntary activities like attending major events, big parties, and traveling voluntarily should be limited to a great extent. Instead of going out to party with friends, one should seek and do a virtual hangout where all of the near ones can still connect. One should note that he is doing this not only to meet his ends, he is rather supporting the entire community and the nation particularly those at higher risk for COVID-19 illness, including older people, and those with significant chronic conditions, including diabetes, heart disease, and lung ailments. If people feel stressed by themselves, working from home, or feeling anxious about the infection, there are other measures they can adopt to stay safe that involves healthy eating, sound sleep, and connecting with friends and family over phone Chapter three. and email. Social distancing. Considerations. The COVID-19 pandemic is an ongoing, rapidly changing scenario to justify and enforce social distancing measures as a central component of the solution. The government health authorities should ensure that decision makers are aware of the existing scientific challenges relevant to the virus and recognize them. Such issues include, but are not limited to, 
the exact modes of transmission of the virus, and the probability of transmission of aerosol. How long someone is exposed to infection. The minimal infectious dosage or number of viral droplets required to cause infection. The degree of infection before the onset of symptoms is to be examined, and how long an individual is infectious after recovery. Whether seasonality affects transmission and immune responses in humans and period of immunity are established. Statistical modeling of the effects of social distancing strategies may help decision-making based on local communication patterns and established or expected parameters of infectiousness, incubation period, and immunity intervals. Public health officials should understand that the decision-making process is rooted in extra-scientific considerations, e.g., feasibility to enforce scientific advice, the pressure to perform, socio-political ingredients, structural factors, financial interests, competition from neighboring countries, etc. Such variables would also affect the execution of any response steps proposed. Consequently, judgments will always be founded on facts, but will very rarely be based on actual facts. Throughout the decision-making and implementation process, the lessons learned from the past influenza pandemics, e.g. from 1918, 1957, 1968, 2009 in ascending order, annual seasonal flu epidemics, and the 2003 SARS outbreak, can be considered as a reference tool. It is important to bear in mind, however, that COVID-19 is a fresh disease with its own features, as yet incompletely realized. The term social distancing refers to efforts aimed at reducing or interrupting virus transmission in a population, subgroup, by minimizing physical contact between potentially infected persons and healthy individuals or among population groups with high transmission levels and population groups with virtually low or negative transmission rates. Community-level social distancing initiatives are required in combination with containment strategies, e.g., communication tracing, as it becomes clearer that containment alone is no longer adequate as a means of delaying the epidemic climax, reducing the peak severity to preserve health care capacity, or preserving healthcare capacity, or protecting susceptible groups at risk of dire consequences. There are many different forms of social distancing steps, and in ascending order of scale, these can be classified into layers. Every progressive layer of measurement includes all preceding layer scales. ECDC, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, report stresses on social distancing initiatives to reduce the spread of SARS-CoV-2. It should be noted that the term social distancing centers on reducing physical contact as a means of disrupting transmission. Although it may result in reducing social contact, may yet it is not a clear goal. However, the effectiveness of long-term social distance interventions will rely on ensuring that people retain regular interaction with friends, relatives, and colleagues from a distance. Therefore, Internet-based networking is a crucial element in maintaining an effective strategy for social distancing. According to the contact analysis, quarantine of cases may be optional or mandatory, depending on the situation. It is recommended to go for self-quarantine in a secure place or at home, and self-monitoring needs to be performed for the presence of COVID-19-compatible symptoms. If symptoms are observed, the check may be performed promptly. One should separate himself from other healthy persons to prevent transmission of the disease occurs, even during asymptomatic or subsymptomatic phases. Social distancing requires one to stay at home and avoid mass movements and close contact with the public, especially known groups, which can turn out to be a high-risk issue. Guidelines are to be floated for the voluntary social distancing of individuals, especially high-risk groups, to reduce transmission, preventing increased morbidity, and thereby reducing the burden on the health system. Confirmed or suspected patients of an infectious disease case are isolated during their encounters, depending on the epidemiology. 
The term quarantine takes on an intrinsic sense of compliance. Often, voluntary self-isolation, or even voluntary quarantine, or self-quarantine, is used to suggest that people knowingly comply with guidelines for public health, as referred to in guidance on ECDC report about social distancing four, methodology. Social distancing. Progresses. To impose social distancing to slow COVID-19's spread, several countries across the globe are now undergoing various measures. These measures reign from banning mass gatherings, closing public spaces such as community centers, pubs, and clubs, to closing schools and a complete lockout of residents forced to live indoors in selective areas. Although self-isolation is a form of social distancing, it's important to make a distinction. Self-isolation and quarantine are intended to avoid the spread of the virus by individuals who are infected or who are suspected to have had contact with persons infected. Social distancing is a broader step to prevent the kind of people mixing that causes infections to spread across a populace. It is also construed that maybe for some time to come, people need to keep a distance from others. Harvard University's latest computer modeling study which is yet to be published in an academic journal, reports that sporadic social distancing measures will need to be introduced in the United States by 2022 unless other initiatives such as vaccines, medication therapy, and effective quarantine measures can be implemented. It's because whenever a one-off duration of social distancing could prolong the epidemic spike until later this year, there is a likelihood to be a rebound in cases toward the end of the year if the concerned virus shows any seasonal discrimination. But there's a strong reason why social distancing has become such an effective strategy in managing the COVID-19 pandemic. In the early stages of an outbreak, every person infected with the COVID-19 coronavirus is thought to pass it on to an average of two to three people in proximity. The magnitude of any contagious epidemic is calculated by epidemiologists via something regarded as the frequency of reproductions. By contrast, the amount of influenza replicated is substantial, depending on the strain. One research has found Spanish flu to have a reproductive number of around 1.8. Rhinovirus, one of the causers of the common cold, has the highest reproductive of all. Most COVID-19 estimates have ranked its reproduction number from a moderate to an extreme level. According to research in China, the incubation period, i.e. the duration between infection and symptoms arising, has been found to have been around five days for COVID-19, although it can take up to a fortnight for symptoms to emerge. If a person is infected and keeps socializing, as usual, he is potentially at risk to pass the virus more than one individual's or family member who could then go on infecting another set of people. In this way, one case will lead to 250-odd other cases within one month, and in two months it will skyrocket to more than 50,000 cases, all in geometric progression. The virus is also believed to be able to spread from individuals who have been infected but have yet to show any symptoms to further complicate this. One research conducted by Lauren Ansel Myers at Austin University of Texas reported that this silent transmission could occur in up to 15% of cases. An additional 1-5% to of people who get the disease will tend to be asymptomatic. Such individuals may not know how to isolate themselves, but if they follow decent standards of social isolation, they would be protected from erroneously transmitting the virus. There's some evidence already that staying at home and keeping a safe distance from others will slow down the spread and avoid this chain reaction. Research into outbreak of novel coronavirus disease in Wuhan, China, has shown that the implementation of large-scale control measures has seen the number of reproductions fall from 2.3 to almost 1 in the region. Once several reproductions exceed 1, the number of cases will stop increasing, as each infected individual is simply passing it on to the other. Modeling research in China has shown that substantial rates of social distancing are critical in reducing this number of reproductions in Wuhan and the broader Hubei area. 
It provided that the sooner a lockdown in the epicenter of an outbreak is put in place, the smaller it ends up being a pandemic. One of the social distancing key goals is to flatten the curve, which means slowing down the spread of the infection so that it affects people more gradually. The aim is to extend the time span during which the virus spreads through a population and hold back the peak number of cases until it never appears again. A graph showing the number of infections without social distancing will peak much quicker. With it, the curve is much flatter, indicating that the number of people infected at any given time is smaller and fewer people requiring medical treatment and support. Yet how does that turn into situations in real life? It's definitely not easy to stay away from friends and family, particularly during a global pandemic. There could be some negative effects coming from people avoiding it. Staying isolated from social groups in the long term is related to depression, dementia, and heart disease. But distancing from society doesn't automatically mean stopping all communication. Unlike in 1918 pandemic, people today have many opportunities to keep in touch with their friends and family. Technology has taken us online video calls, social media, messaging applications, and many other means of communication. Even people can now order bare necessities like food and domestic essentials online conclusion. Without going out. In these hours of pandemics, all persons long for a respite, a breather from the clutches of natural catastrophes, stress, anxiety, and consternation. Something affirmative, invigorating, and mind-relieving measures are a great restorative, be it for a few moments. People need something in modern society, and in particular in challenging times, to make all feel better, of course, instantly. It is the art of replenishing, revitalizing, and positively refocusing one both physically and mentally. Daily hand washing, i.e. reducing or removing close contact and proximity to others, is the best way to protect oneself and the workers under supervision. It would be social distancing and the term is increasingly being used as individuals learn what measures they can adopt to try to minimize the risk of contracting any kind of viral infection when the pandemic begins. There are ample ways one can promote on-the-job social distancing. For instance, crowded areas and large masses of people, whether in internal or external spaces, should be resisted and prohibited. There should be a distance of at least one meter between men wherever possible. Wider distances are more productive. Planning to visit ailing individuals or any interaction with them should be avoided as and when possible. Besides, one must stay away from face-to-face -face meetings and use the phone, video conferencing, and internet to do activities are the most suitable options, even though participants are under one roof. Also, people should avoid shaking hands as a goodwill gesture and any other greetings that require tangible touch from person to person. People should also still steer clear of any needless travel, and it is recommended to cancel or defer non-essential seminars, conferences, and training stints, if any. Whenever necessary, one should make adequate arrangements for workers to spend flexible working hours either at the workplace or take up assignments from home to prevent human flooding at factory premises. Wherever possible, people should practice the ghost shift, i.e., going off duty exiting the workplace before the new shift begins. Allowing a gap is a welcome step, if necessary, before reoccupying the workplace. When needed, people should ventilate the office thoroughly between shifts by sliding doors and windows open, or by turning the air conditioning on. Public transport should be avoided. One should adopt walking, cycling, or driving a car, or going early or late to stop swarming during rush hours on public vehicles. Lunch can be carried from home and eaten at office premises away from others. Packed cafeteria and restaurants should be avoided. Implementing spaced lunch times is advisable so as to limit the number of people in the lunchroom. Do not meet in tea rooms or other places where people meet one another. If business internet banking is not used by the company, one can suggest setting it up and starting the migration as early as possible. 
The management should encourage workers to register for and use personal Internet banking services. It will allow them to avoid unnecessary physical bank visits. The bottom line is to do what needs to be done and follow suit by evacuating the place at the first call.